Hello, I'm Sir Paul and in this report presentation, I am about to talk job attitude and behavior. What do we know about these things? Well, maybe we cannot write now or define them, but we will see that these things, attitude and behavior, are everywhere, everywhere around us. We are creating for ourselves once every day. But before tackling into details, I want to present the objectives of this video presentation. The objectives of this report presentation are first, explain in a direct and simple manner the job attitude and behavior in relation to evaluating performance. Next, demonstrate the topics interestingly, creatively, like this kind of learning mode for easy comprehension. Last but not the least, though I will be presenting or discussing in a direct and simple manner, that will not sacrifice this learning objective. Provide comprehensive information about the topics that could generate new knowledge through case studies and reasons. Let me start by telling you what I think of how effective an employee is for an organization. A number of factors might come to my mind. These factors could be intelligence, skill, training. However, as important as these matters are, perhaps there are greater and more influential factors. These influential factors are attitude and behavior. Even the most skilled and talented employee might be prone to severe underperformance if his or her attitude and behavior in the workplace are lacking or deficient. On the other hand, employees whose dedication and commitment leads them to high levels of effort often excel even when they are not the most talented and skilled. Now, organizations have grown increasingly aware of the significance of the matter and are investing more time and effort than ever to create the best attitude and behavior possible among their employees. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, we see attitudes everywhere around us we are creating for ourselves because attitudes are some sort of an evaluative statement which reflect how we feel about something. So it could be favorable or unfavorable statements or it involves mind's uh, predisposition to certain ideas, values, people, systems, institutions, or events. Again, it is evaluative statements and with them we are or at least our mind is saying how do we feel about something so let's say i'm going to have an evening coffee i'm having evening coffee and i already create some attitude towards coffee was it good or bad does it make me feel happy or not another let's say i have got some kind of job towards this job i have some attitude as well which is much more uh, of a long-term character because either i like my job or i do not like my job now moreover an employee's attitude uh, really has a potential to impact his interactions with others and his individual work performance Attitude affects an employee's reaction to others, including colleagues, um, supervisors, and customers. Attitude affects his perception of his job and his value to the organization. If an employee's work tasks involve collaboration with others, his attitude you know, can affect the success or failure of the group. And attitude can be more specific and they are created out of components. So right now, I'm going to briefly tackle about these There are three components of attitude. First, 
cognitive component, the most basic component, the aspect of attitude that is a description of a belief in the way things are. This component consists of beliefs, values, ideas, and other information a person has about the subject or object. So this makes no difference whether or not the information is empirically correct. Next, affective component. So this is the emotional segment or feeling segment of an attitude and is reflected in the statement. So this sets the stage for more critical part of an attitude and can lead to the behavioral outcomes. Third is the conative component or it can be called behavioral component. This refers to the action, action or an intention to behave in a certain way towards someone or something. So let's take note of the words belief for cognitive, emotions or feelings for affective, and actions for cognitive. Now to better understand these three components, let me give you an illustrative example of them. Let's say I have some kind of job and I express my cognitive component of an attitude. I evaluated that my pay or salary as a teacher, for example, is low. So you can notice that in this example, there is no emotion. No, there is no emotion in it. I'm gonna take no action out of this belief because I just think that things are as they are, so that my salary is low. However, I can move to another component of an attitude and that is going to be affective component. So I'm going to express my feeling about the belief. As mentioned, I have low salary and the emotional segment for that belief is that I am unhappy over how little I am paid. So we can see how the components are building or related. At first, my salary is low which is currently in this slide and since I am paid low, my affective component of an attitude is unhappy. Finally, we have the cognitive or behavioral component. So this is action. So we know that I am paid low and I am unhappy about that. So I am going to look for another job that pays better. That is the action. No? That is my intention to behave or the other action I could do is to establish myself as an expert in my field so I could earn more because promotion will surely follow. Things like that. Um, you can notice that the three components of attitude are closely related and the cognitive and affective in particular are inseparable in many ways. You know, they can affect how we act. Imagine you concluded that your boss or leader or principal uh, had just treated you unfairly, you will surely have a feeling about that. Job attitudes are evaluations of one's jobs that express one's feelings towards one's job, beliefs about one's jobs, and attachment to one's job. A person can have numerous of attitudes, but organizational behavior focuses our attention attention on a very limited number of work-related attitudes. There can be negative or positive evaluation that employees hold about the aspect of their work environment. Most of research in organizational behavior has looked at attitudes in aspects. These aspects can impact the attitude of a person has about their position. Let's start with job satisfaction. This refers to a description of a positive feeling about the job. A person with a high level of job satisfaction hold positive feelings about the job. Well, the satisfied person holds negative feelings. When people uh, speak of employee attitude, they usually or commonly mean job satisfaction. How much satisfaction a person gets from doing their job can directly relate to their attitude about it. Job satisfaction is a very personal aspect of work 
as satisfaction in many ways reflects how the person views not only how they do their job but also how the company views how they do their job and who they are as a person now there are several components that are associated with job satisfaction and they are recognition equitable compensation ability to grow in the position and responsibility commensurate with compensation next is job involvement this is the degree to which an employee is engaged in an enthusiastically or enthusiastic about performing their work people become involved in their jobs when they perceive in them the potential for satisfying salient psychological needs like growth achievement meaning recognition security now job involvement enhances individuals work performance by motivating them to exert greater effort and use their creativity to solve problems and work intelligently worker with high job involvement finds work meaning and challenging work at complex tasks employing a variety of skills and see complete units of work through their completion now organizational commitment now it is a state in which employee identifies with a particular organization and its goals and wishes to maintain membership in the organization so far we have talked a great deal about employees attitude but that attitude does not exist you know, in a vacuum the company has to be a part of the attitude as well and help the employee to feel good about not only their job but the company as a whole now the company needs some type of organizational commitment to their employee that is to say they need to show the employees they care about them and their well-being so this type of commitment can be shown in a variety of ways next aspect is perceived organizational support this refers to which employee believe that the organizational values their contribution and care for their well-being like they have a voice in a decision and when their supervisors are seen as supportive for example help is available from my organization when i have a problem or uh, my organization would forgive an honest mistake on my part last is employee engagement employees not only show attitudes by how well or how poorly they do their jobs but also how engaged they are with the company so employee engagement is the degree to which an employee is connected not to all aspects of the company and works to help the organization grow and reach its goals um, for this aspect individuals might volunteer in a company sponsored events projects programs activities activities not to help the needy or they might recommend cost-saving ideas that they see as they they do their job so this type of engage engagement is a godsend for the organization as it shows how involved the employee is beyond just doing their job so those are the uh, aspects of job attitudes now let me tackle behavior this relates to the actual expression of feelings or emotions it can be described as the way of conducting oneself it is the manner of acting or controlling oneself towards their environment in any circumstances i already talked about attitude how they are structured what kind of components do they have but the question is still is why our attitude is still so important when we are studying organizational behavior or behavior and in evaluating performances in the organization as we continue this report presentation i hope i can give you an answer now the behavior follows attitude and that is why the attitudes 
are so important for us because the employees within the organization are going to have some attitude and it is going to influence or even decide or determine what kind of behavior they're going to have. So let's take a look at it by this example. And there are going to be two important ideas within this presentation. One is this logic flow no, that you can see on the right side of your screen. Um, how can behavior follows attitudes? And secondly, I am going to talk about quite important term, the cognitive dissonance later. Now, at first, we have some sort of attitude no, that is our belief. Like, what do we believe in? Let's say that salary in the Philippines is low. Now, what kind of behavior I am going to have? No, well, let's say that I am going to perform some action, some activity na that I am going to work abroad. No, this action makes sense, isn't it? Commonly, we hear this action even to us teachers. Personally, I still have that idea no, that in time when opportunity knocks or when desire pushes me to do so, I will go to a foreign country no, that could help me earn more and more money. Now, if I believe that the Philippine salary is low, it is quite logical that I'm going to find for a job that pays well or that pays better. And my action for that belief is I'm going to work abroad. Now, but what is in between there, between the attitude and behavior, between belief and action? Now, this is important. For us, there is something we call moderating variables. We know that attitude can predict the behavior and this happens through moderating variables. What are these? So there are four main ones. First is the importance of the attitude. How important it is that I consider Philippine salary is low. Let's say maybe this is for working class person generally speaking who performs uh, manual labor or blue collar workers in our country uh, we know that blue collar jobs no, are paid so low no it is really uh, it is really no wonder why many go abroad and you know, this is the reason to make me believe that salary in the Philippines you no know, is low with this belief I definitely am going to work abroad. So, the importance is simply moderating the attitude towards behavior. Secondly, there is some sort of correspondence to behavior. This is a little bit trickier, but let's think about it like, how does the behavior correspond to an attitude? So, this is pretty straightforward. If I think that Philippine salary is low, I will work abroad. So, the attitude and behavior is told or is stated in a direct manner. Or, let's say if I would consider revising it, you know, the stated attitude to teacher's salary is low. It is not so straightforward in the action statement you know, that I'm going to work abroad because there are many reasons why a person decided to work abroad. Next, we have accessibility to behavior. Here, maybe I am not able to afford to go abroad or might not ready to work completely in another country because rules, ways, things there are completely different here in the Philippines. So maybe the action, if I have this low paying job in the Philippines, I might start doing my own business, doing own business no, can make more profits no, things like that so that's that is accessibility to behavior that due to some reasons for failing to materializing the action the action is not accessible to me so it is um, another very important and strong moderating variable finally uh, is the direct experience Maybe I believe that the salary in the Philippines is low, but in my experience, I was able to do uh, buy and sell and help me earn more 
and if the chance of being promoted sooner or later that may influence how the logic flow that my action no will be materialized so that's how actual expression or behavior could be predicted next the cognitive dissonance this refers to any incompatibility between two or more attitudes or between behavior and attitude this produces a feeling of mental discomfort leading to an alteration in one of the attitudes beliefs or behaviors to reduce the discomfort and restore balance example when people smoke and they know that smoking causes cancer they are in a state of cognitive dissonance so there is this incompatibility there are people who still is doing smoking even if it was not good so what we need to try to do is remove this incompatibility basically because it is uncomfortable so what we need to do uh, to feel more comfortable is change the attitude like people don't like smoke smoking because they know smoking is bad it can cause cancer or let's say that um, the salary in the philippines is low then my aunt my auntie offered me a job abroad so there is this uncomfortable feeling that i am like pressured to act or do the action of going abroad because of the promising offer incompatibility is there because maybe that was not i am thinking uh, things like that so that's cognitive dissonance so there is this feeling of uncomfortability before doing something or making a decision or um we are trying to justify or rationalize a decision that you made or an action you have taken or probably you may feel embarrassed or ashamed about something um, we've done and we try to hide uh, our actions from other people or cognitive dissonance could be or could um, because of social pressure or a fear of missing out you know so we do things even if it wasn't something uh, that we wanted to do so that's cognitive dissonance now let's see some case studies about the topic discussed in the study of judge uh, wise kamayal miller and yulin on year 27 titled job attitudes uh, job satisfaction and job effect a century of continuity and of change it was revealed that over the past 100 years um, studies on job attitudes has improved in the sophistication of methods and in the productive use of uh, theory as a basis for fundamental research uh, into questions of work psychology early research incorporated a diversity of methods for measuring potential predictors and outcomes of job attitudes so they discussed this and concluded that the emphasizing topics have proven to be enduring guides for understanding the ways you know, that people understand and react to their appraisal of their work now in the study of kogin nang and lee on year 2016 titled controlling healthcare professionals how human resource management influences uh, job attitudes and operational efficiency they found that a mix between behavior output and input controls as well as elements of commitment based hrm to manage senior physicians they observe low levels of investments in people and a concentration on transactional human resource uh, activities which led to negative job attitudes such as low morale and frustration among healthcare professionals while hospitals use rules to promote conformity with established procedures the overuse and at times in appropriate use of behavior controls restricted health care managers ability to motivate and engage their staff Lomoya, Pingol, and Teng on year 2015 exposed in their study that 
job characteristics, rewards, and recognition, and training and development are correlated to job satisfaction of contractual workers in the country. In this study, it was found out that organizational performance provides a framework to plan, assess, and manage performance. So the implications of the study helped the organization understand the impact of organizational performance related to employee attitude and behavior and its outcome. So the results suggested that uh, the employee attitude survey is a handy tool for the goal of the organization wants to use it for its performance. This local study of Kiev and RU on year 2017, it was revealed in this study titled Employee Satisfaction of Work-Life Balance Policies and Organizational Commitment, a Philippine study that employees overall satisfaction is positively related to organizational commitment. The Luay and Jalagat study on year 2016 exposed that the company should continuously utilize and sustain participative leadership style which uh, promoted employees' productive performance and satisfactory level of job satisfaction. Now, in this study, it was revealed that the strong culture of the organization has a high positive influence on the organizational commitment of teachers and has a slightly positive influence on you know, the teacher's job satisfaction. Now, attitudes and behavior in the workplace are very dynamic and have many different aspects to them. So there are aspects that are on the part of the employee and aspects that are on the part of the company. Now, from the employee's perspective, their attitudes are shaped by job satisfaction, which is how satisfied a person gets from doing their job, job involvement, how engaged a person is with doing their job, and the level of enthusiasm they have for doing it and employee engagement which is the degree to which an employee is connected to all aspects of the company and works to help the organization grow and reach its goals now on the part of the organization the company needs to show some type of commitment to the employee the organizational commitment shows the employees the company cares about them and their well-being and is a major factor in shaping employees' attitude and behavior. Now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something useful and whatever it is, you are now better than a moment ago.